Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how you can use animations in Jetpack Compose, so you can take this as a full animation guide. If you take a look at the Android documentation, you will be bombarded with this chart, which um, yeah, some beginners might think, whoa, that's a lot about animations in Jetpack Compose. And yes, there are a lot of different animations, um, but I want to make this easier for you with this video to show you what you really need in practice all the time and how you can use that to animate something in your Compose UI. I will say right away, um, I will focus on the more high level animation APIs here. So that means um, it's pretty much this part here without this animation, animatable and animation state. Um, if you want to also see how you can make super customized animations, um, which in my experience, you don't need that often, but if you need it, it's good to know that, then I will make that a separate video. So, so just let me know that down in the comments and then I'll, I'll also make a video about things like animation, animatable and animation state. So let's actually jump into Render Studio and see what we got here. We got an em empty uh, Jetpack Compose UI and I will simply start to create a simple layout. Let's just make this a column and we're just going to put in a button with which we can toggle some state to trigger our animations later on. And by the way, you will also find jump marks down below to see the different types of animations. So if you're only interested in one type, then you can easily move forward to that. Let's add a modifier to this column here to yeah, make it uh, fill the whole size of our screen. And then we're going to add a simple button. When we click that, we want to toggle some state. And the text of the button will be, I don't know, just toggle or so. And we will actually start with this animated visibility because that is really the easiest, um, the easiest type of these of this animation API. Animated visibility is used if you well need to animate visibility of a composable. So if there is a composable in your Compose UI that is sometimes shown and sometimes hidden, then you can use animated visibility to easily animate the change when it becomes visible and when it becomes invisible. How can we do this? We could create a simple state here is visible, for example, by remember, and we make that immutable state of false initially. So we can import get value and yeah, that's it. And then here, when we click on our button, we simply toggle this state like this. And now let's create a little composable that we want to animate the visibility off. So down here below our button, we can say animated visibility. And you can see this has this condition visible. And here we simply apply the compose state that determines whether our composable that we want to animate should be visible or not. So in our case, that's just simply is visible. So in the end, you just need to return a Boolean, oops, uh, a Boolean here. That's true when it should be visible and false if not. So this, this animated visibility composable is in the end, just a wrapper around whatever you would normally put in an if statement. So we could also say if is visible and then simply show our composable here or we simply put in our composable in here to have it with an animation. So for example, box with a modifier of, um, let's say background color.red. So we just have a red box. We can add a little modifier here for the animated visibility to make it fill um, the rest of the space. So first of all, the whole width, and then we give it a weight of one F. So it just occupies the remaining space of our column. And now we effectively already create an animation based on visibility. So if we launch this here on my emulator and we then click on this toggle button, then we will see, ooh, we actually have an animation and we can easily toggle this. So how can we actually customize this? You can see it actually expands in height and it also fades a little bit, but we can of course also change that. For example, if we wanted to slide in from the left or so, then we can apply another parameter here to animated visibility. And we can specify on the one hand an enter transition or an exit transition. So enter is obviously the transition when it becomes visible and exit when it um, becomes invisible. And here we can simply, uh, yeah, de describe this animation in simple words. That's what I really like about Compose. So we can really say, okay, to enter the screen, we want it to slide in horizontally, for example like this. And then we can say, oh, we also want it to fade in. So we can say plus fade in. 
And it seems we actually don't need this Lambda block. So we can just take this and paste it directly like this. Yes. And if we now reload this, now we only change the enter transition. Then now it slides in from the left and then it becomes uh, invisible like it did before because we didn't change the exit transition. But that's how we can actually also change um, the type of animation here with your animated visibility. Cool. So what is next? What if we actually want to animate some kind of specific value of a composable that's not simply whether that's visible or not. So for example, if we want to animate the color of a composable or we want to animate the size or we want to animate the rotation or something like that, then we obviously can't use animated visibility because that has nothing to do with the visibility. So we simply comment this out and let's say we now create a state that represents the current animation value of whatever we want to animate. So whenever the state will be updated, which will be um, yeah for every frame when we run this animation, then it will also update all the composables where we use it at, which in the end will then be an animation. So for example, if we have another state here and let's call it is round, which will also be a boolean, and we now want to animate the border radius of a box. So we have a square and then after we click the button, we want to animate it to a circle and back. So what we can do for that is we can now say, um, first of all, we also toggle this here when we click our button. And then we can say, okay, we actually now create our border radius state. And we can say by animate int as state. So there are a ton of these animate as state functions, which are another part of this animation API and compose. So depending on which value you want to animate, you of course choose the right function here. So if you want to animate a rectangle, an integer size, a dp, or a color. In our case, that's an integer because we want to animate a percentage value from 0 to 100, so that our border radius will also be animated from um, yeah, no border radius at all, which would be 0, and 100 would be obviously um, a complete circle. So we can say by animate int as state. And here we need to specify a target value. This target value, whenever this changes, this function will animate the current value of our border radius to the new target value. So if we say, if oops, is round, then we want this state to animate to 100, since that would be a full circle and else to zero, because that would just be yeah, the border radius of a rectangle or of a square. And I assume we also need to import something here. No, it actually needs to be a val, and that is the issue. And now this border radius is effectively an integer which comes from a state. So whenever this changes, then it will also recompose wherever we use it, and that will then cause the animation. So if we now create a little box here with a modifier, let's say we have a modifier size um, let's give it a 200 dp, import dp, import size. And then we say, okay, we clip this. We clip this to a rounded corner shape. And here you can see we have this percent overload. We can simply, yeah, enter our percentage value as an integer. And that's simply our border radius. And then we give it a background color. So we actually see something, color that red. And that now also works as an animation. So since when is round changes. So first of all, is round is false. So this border radius state will start at zero since it's false. If we then toggle it to true after clicking the button, this if condition will apply. So we change this to 100, but we don't directly change it to 100 because we use animate int as state. So it will smoothly animate this value from zero to 100. And then whenever this border radius state changes, it will obviously recompose our box so since this changes here and then yeah apply the corresponding border radius so if we launch this take a look here here we have our squared box and if we click toggle then we will animate it to a circle very cool it's of course very quick so how can we change this um the how, how quick it is we can actually apply a perimeter here and that is this animation spec so animation specs are another concept of compose animations you will often face there are different types of animation specs. There are um, some very common ones. That is on the one hand tween, which just, um, yeah, that's the most basic one here. You can define a duration, so how long that takes, a delay. So if you wanted to start after a second only, 
and some easing functions. So how fast the animation will play at which time. So let's try around with that a little bit. We have duration millis, that would be, for example, three seconds. Let's say delay millis is 500 milliseconds. And the easing, here we can just, yeah, as I said, define at which time the animation plays how fast. So um, I'm not sure, we could also say something like linear easing so that at every time it plays exactly as fast as before. I will just leave this as it is, relaunch this and take a look here. If we now click toggle, it will be slower, as you can see. And there are, of course, other types of animation specs as well. For example, what you also sometimes like to use is Spring to have a little bumpy animation. Um, here we don't have these values. Let's see what we have. We have a damping ratio, we have stiffness, and both these values are actually just used to determine how, how bouncy this animation is. I will just leave it as it is to, see, uh, to show you what this spring actually does. So we now click toggle, then, okay, now we actually don't see this. Let's add some, some bounciness here by changing the damping ratio to spring.highbouncy. And we could change the stiffness to uh, spring.stiffness very low, for example. And that should now look a little bit different. Um, it crashed. <laughs> Let's see why. So I'm not sure why, but it says the percent should be in the range of 0 and 100, which it is. That's a bit weird. Uh, maybe we better choose 99. I don't know if it's... Normally with floats, I could imagine that this happens, that it's not exactly 1. Um, but with integers, it shouldn't happen. Not sure why. Let's try this again. Oh, and I'm actually dumb, of course, because we use the um, spring animation spec. It will also, yeah, it will change the value beyond what we specify here, since it's a spring. Um, that, of course, makes sense. So if we, let's choose something like 20, maybe then it makes more sense. Yeah, now you can see there's a little bit of bounciness in there. And of course, if we do, a, if you animate it back to zero, then it will crash again, because it will then um, also kind of set the value to something like minus 10 or so. And that does not make any sense as a percentage value for the border radius. But if we say, okay, we have 40 and 20, try that again. Border radius is actually a bad example for this, but you see what this does. So it's a lot more bouncy which is a bit of fun. So, are there any other animation specs? Yes, there is a rather low level one, which is keyframes. So we can say keyframes. And here we can really specify specific keyframes. So um, from this time to this time, um, play it that fast. From this time to this time, play it that fast. Um, so this is rather low level. And uh, if you want that, I will cover that in a separate video. But usually you're fine with tween. So that is what I use the most often. So we can say duration millis and set it to something to play our animation. So that's it for animate as state, but there is also a comparable API that is yeah, very similar to animate as state, which is called update transition. And that is used if you have a single state or like an animation that is dependent on a single state, for example, on is round, and you want to animate multiple values based on that. So in that case, we can use update transition. We can get this transition value by saying, remember, oh, actually, no, just update transition. And it's very similar. So here we also need to specify a target state, which is just is round here. So here we don't have this if statement. This will come afterwards. And we also should assign a label here. I will set it to null so we get rid of the warning. And now we can use this transition value, which is dependent on our is round state, to now animate multiple values based on that. So instead of border radius uh, by animate int as state, we could now say by transition dot animate int. And actually, let's get rid of that. This will now take a transition spec, um, which we could also change. So that is again to change how fast this animation plays. You could say tween, and that plays two seconds. It again wants us to pass a label here. And the most important part, most important part here is oh, we actually need to assign a non-null label. For example, border radius, radius like this. 
And this target value by state is the interesting function here because here we get access to our is round value, whether that's true or false. And here we now just put in what we would have put in in this target state of this animate index state before. So we can say if is round, we say 100% and else zero. But since we now have this transition value, we can also use that to animate multiple values based on that. So down here, we could say we also animate the color based on our is round value. So we could say color by transition animate color. Here we can say the transition spec is, for example, a tween, but this time just one second. We give it a label of color. And let's assign a target value by state again and get rid of this block. Here we again get a reference to our is round value. And we could say, okay, if our box is actually round, we want it to be green and else we say it's red. And then it will yeah, simply animate between a green and red when our is round value changes with this corresponding time. So if we now go down to our box and we change this background color to our color state, relaunch the app, take a look here, click toggle, then you can see it now animates both values. So we have a green circle and a red square. And something important here is that you can of course also um, specify an animation like that with multiple values in another way. So all these animation APIs are just recommendations for specific scenarios. So here for this update transition, the Android documentation says, hey, uh, use this if you want to animate multiple values based on a single state, which we do here. But you could also represent the exact same animation by simply having two animate um, int as state and yeah, just an animate color as state without this transition. So that would also work. What I just want to say here is if you take a look at this Android documentation, you're like, whoa, so many different animation APIs. But in the end, you can achieve the same type of behavior with a lot of them without being super wrong. And I want to just show you how you can actually use these, for example, update transition, animate, index state and stuff like that. And all these, uh, these animation APIs that you've seen these ones and then depending on your situation, just use what you feel comfortable with. But in the end, you can use most of these to achieve what you want. Cool. So I will actually comment this out again since we don't need this anymore. Now let's come to the next type of animation, which are infinite animations. So if you infinitely want to animate a value, for example, always animate the color of our box, always animate the rotation to make it always rotating, then you can use something called an infinite repeatable. So we can say val repeatable is remember infinite transition. And let's actually call this transition again. And then with this value, you can create this infinite transition. So for example, val color by transition dot animate color. And you can also animate a float or any other value. With a float, you can, by the way, pretty much create all types of animation since you can always just animate this between um, zero and 100%. So for example, if you were to animate um, a whole rotation of a circle, you could animate a float between zero and one and then multiply this value with 360 degrees. And then you also are able to animate a degree value. So even though you don't have an animate int function here to directly animate these degrees, you can always use a float to achieve that behavior just as a little side tip or side advice. Um, we want to animate a color here. The initial value will be, let's say, color red. Target value will be color green again. And now the animation spec will be our transition, uh, actually not transition, it will be an infinite repeatable. And that is, yeah, um, some kind of custom animation spec that I didn't mention before. And it will just execute, yeah infinitely. So we can say the animation is a duration based animation spec. So here we could pass a tween again. Let's say um, like a whole transition from red to green will last two seconds. And we could say we have a repeat mode. Whether yeah, basically what happens when this animation finished once. So when our color animated from red to green, what happens then? Does it start at red again? Or does it animate back from green to red? That is what we can define here. So we can say repeat mode reverse. So it would yeah, animate back or restart, then it would yeah, just start at red again. Restarting doesn't make sense for colors because then you, we have this jump to red again. So we say reverse. So it's always a smooth animation. Then we can go to our box, get rid of the clip here. Don't need this anymore. And just pass our color here from our infinite animation um, state. 
we now launch this, take a look, and then you can see now it always animates the color without us needing to do anything. So if you need an infinite transition or infinite animation, then there's really no way around this. Don't try to make any other hacky animations with while well loops or so with the other APIs. This should really be used for that to, so you have an infinite repeatable and then you're good. But I think it's pretty easy to use to, um, yeah, to actually create this infinite animation. And now I want to come to the last type of animation um, for this video at least. And that is animated content that uh, requires a little bit of more code, but in the end that's used if you want to swap out content. So it's comparable to animated visibility, what we had in the beginning, while animated visibility is just used to toggle one piece of content, so one composable, um, to just make it invisible and visible. Animated content, on the other hand, is used if you have two pieces of content and you want to make one invisible and the other one visible instead. That is when we use animated, uh, animated content. So let's go down here and I will also get rid of this. Let's actually get rid of this whole thing. Comment this out. And at the very bottom below animated visibility, we can say animated content. Here, we first of all need to also specify a target state, which let's say is visible again. Let's assign a modifier to make it fill our whole screen. So fill max width and assigning a weight of 1f again. Then we need a transition spec. We could also pass some content alignment, which we don't need here since we fill the whole screen anyways. And then some content that we actually want to have here and swap out. Let's actually start with that because that might be a bit more um, easy to understand. So here we actually get a reference to our is visible value. And then we can check, okay, if is visible, oh, not that one, <laughs> is visible, we want to show this composable. So we can say we have a box with a modifier background color green. And if it's not visible, we just have a different type of composable, which can also be a box, just with a different background color, for example, like this. So here we again just um, toggle the content of our animated content. And of course, that doesn't only work with, um, with two pieces of composables. You could also have some kind of sealed class or sealed interface here. And then you have a big when expression where you check for different branches and they can have as many branches as you like to, yeah, if you need to swap five different pieces of content, for example, for an onboarding screen or so, where you just have five different screens to onboard a user and you want to animate between these, then you could also do something like animated content here. So now that we specified our content, the last thing we need to specify is our transition spec. And that works a bit different from the transition specs we uh, we did before because here we specify the enter and exit transition in one single spec. So the easiest type of transition spec we could have here is simply a fade in and then we say with fade out. So this is simply then the enter transition and this is the exit transition. And we get an error here because we need this experimental animation API. Let's just add this to main activity. Let's see how this looks like. We will also implement some, some more complex um, transition spec here. But you can see we have our red box and if we click toggle we swap this out with a green box and we simply fade it uh, out and the other one in so but what if we actually want to have some more complex transition spec for example if we want to move one box to the left and the other one to the right or the other way around and then we can use something called slide oops we already used this slide in uh, horizontally this one here um, and here we get an integer and this integer is basically the offset. So with this integer, we can now define from where our sliding in actually starts and where it will lead to. Let's actually get rid of this Lambda block and define this here in a normal parentheses instead. What we need to have here is an initial offset X and we can make this based on this integer value here. So that requires a little bit of explanation. If we say that is minus it then the initial value would be or this would be a zero here at this at this corner and then if we set this to minus it then it would be somewhere here if we would set this to just it it would be here so the the sliding will start from here and then we can say it slides to some other value i think we just try this out this is really hard to explain um so we can also go here and we say the um, exit transition is slide out horizontally where we say, okay, we do have a target offset. 
And here we could say where we want to animate to. So for example, to it. Let me show what it does and then I will explain this it stuff again. If we now click toggle, you can see that is now how it looks like. It looks very cool, right? Um, so that is now the way how our content is swapped out. So let's think about why it looks like that. So now we have this green box composable. And with this initial offset X, we define where the, the box is that will now animate in. So that will replace our current box. And this is at minus it. If we take a look here, as I said, minus it would be somewhere here. So we say here is our current box that we now want to move to our screen. And with this exit transition, with this target offset X, we say, hey, what is the target offset where we want to animate this to when it leaves the screen? So when it slides out and that is it. So again, it starts here, that would be zero and it would therefore be here. So it would be a full, yeah, just the full length in according to its width. So we say the green box that will now leave the screen will slide from this edge to this edge. So just a whole time, yeah, based on its width if that makes sense. <laughs> if we change this to it divided by two, for example, and this as well, then it will look a little bit differently. If you check this, then yeah, it will basically start at exactly 50% of the width. Uh, if we want to make this based on our is visible state, we could also do this. So we could say if is visible, we say that's equal to it and else minus it. And then we copy this and do the, oops, the other way around for this one. So here we'd say minus it and it. Then we also achieve a very cool effect. If we take a look here, then it will look like this. So we basically move it always the other way around depending on what is currently visible. So that's just a very cool composable to animate the change from one composable to another. Feel free to play around with that. There's also a similar one, which is called um, Crossfade, which I won't go into here. It's just a simplified version of animated content. So if you, if you just care about animating the alpha value, so just fading it, fading in a composable and fading out the other one, then you can simply use Crossfade and you need to write a little bit less code. But if you want some custom animation when swapping out content, you need this animated content composable. So I hope that gave you a good impression of animations in Jetpack Compose. If you want to learn more advanced Android concepts and topics where I can go much deeper into, then I have plenty of courses where I do that. Simply check the link down below, check out my courses. Other than that, I hope this video helped you to get a good impression of the animation APIs in Jetpack Compose. If you want to see more low level APIs and want to see me cover these, then let me know that down below. Enjoy your day and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.